This is Amazon's take on a CPU cooler. It's actually real. And their cannibalistic Amazon Basics brand is now getting into computers, continuing the product centipede-like circle of eating top-selling branded products and then spitting them out as characterless first-party copies for as cheap as possible. It's the Amazon Basics cooler. And this $28 mini tower has it all. It's got a fan. And the fan has an LED. It's got some fins. And it's got some copper heat pipes. But there's more. It comes in this box. They actually just stick the shipping label straight to it. And we added the text on the front. And the box contains some parts and a manual. So it isn't, to be fair to them, it is in fact actually extremely basic. And because it's $28, that's kind of the point of this. But the cooler market is really fierce, where there are al already a lot of good options that are not distant in price. So like the Thermal Right Assassin Spirit is similar in price, at least when we reviewed it. And uh, it's a larger cooler. The Amazon Basics one is a 92 millimeter tower versus the 120 tower for thermal right. Of course, you also have stock coolers that these days are much better than they used to be and are pretty competitive options with a similarly sized 90 millimeter fan. So this is what we're gonna be looking at. And while we were looking at it, we noticed a couple of familiar details. The heat pipes are almost identical to Cooler Master's coloring for heat pipes. The fin stack, also identical to their standard coloring for an aluminum fin stack. Some companies have sort of a different shade of an aluminum color, depending on how they finish it. And the fan is basically a classic, identical Cooler Master fan. So we asked someone at Cooler Master unofficially if this is a Cooler Master product, and they, they said yes. Before that, this video is brought to you by Linode, cloud computing from Akamai, our web hosting provider that we've been using for over a decade now. In our experience as a long-term customer of Linode, they have reliable server solutions and make server setup easy by providing all kinds of first install scripts and launch points. You can quickly build your own self-hosted VPN, game servers for CSGO, Minecraft, and more by using their quick start guides and extremely detailed documentation. We also have first-hand experience with their support team and can vouch for the quality, even when all the mistakes were mine. Visit linode.com slash gamersnexus to get a $100 credit when you sign up today or click the link below. So basically, Cooler Master is making this Amazon Basics cooler. They've stuck a black label on the fan on the center of it to get rid of where the Cooler Master logo would be. The back of the fan label also is simplified where the title of it says Computer Fan, and that's basically it. I mean, it tells you 12 volts, 0.4 amps, but not more than that. The shape of this particular tower is really identifiable where you see you've got kind of this like chamfered edge comes in around the back, same up here. And we were able to, with the knowledge that this is originally a Cooler Master product that Amazon is uh, cutting pennies out of for the cost and sticking their name on to, I mean, eventually push everyone else out if they can of the category. When we looked into it, we noticed that it's a Cooler Master H410R which later was rebranded as an H412R, but it looks like the H410. There's a few changes, but for the most part, Amazon just ripped the Cooler Master stickers off, debranded it, and that's it. It's not like they're stealing from Cooler Master. Cooler Master is just straight up OEMing for Amazon. They do the same thing for Nvidia's Quadro coolers, for instance. But Amazon's able to cut costs where most other companies maybe feel like they can't because they have to sit on potentially a real physical retail shelf somewhere if not on Amazon, then maybe in a micro center, a Best Buy, or somewhere in a different region of the world, Amazon doesn't have to worry about that. They sell on Amazon, which they own, obviously, and it sits in a warehouse. So they can cut costs on the box to get rid of painting, which we actually don't hate. We don't put any ink on our boxes either, more for because I think it's wasteful because you just get rid of the box. But uh, it, when their competitors have to do it, that's where they save pennies. Same thing for all of this packaging. It's kept extremely bare bones. You get nothing more than the literal absolute basics, hence the name. And uh, it's, it is, as I said in the intro, a pretty characterless way to make a product. But when you compete on price, that's really your only avenue is cut cost. Anyone can compete on price. So let's look at this mechanically. So as we look at the cooler, it is very basic. It's four heat pipes. They are copper heat pipes. They're not nickel plated or anything like that. And then it's got an aluminum fin stack, very basic. It's basically 
I mean, every cooler does this. But things like fin pitch and density, that's where you get some of the engineering. And, of course, finishes on materials like nickel plating, the heat pipes on... Oh, I dropped this one on purpose for a gimmick in a video. That's why it's damaged. Heat pipes so good that they oppose gravity. Let's see if they work. Nope. Let's look at that side. Nickel plating the heat pipes make it look a little bit better, things like that. Uh, plating the aluminum fin stack. But here you don't get any of that. There is a fairly basic, uh, I keep saying that. Simple cold plate. So it's got copper heat pipe direct contact. This uh, is potentially a pitfall where if they haven't refined the tolerances, and I sincerely doubt they have, then the areas between the aluminum plate and the copper heat pipe are more likely to require some assistance from extra thermal paste to make contact because it may be a deeper valley or groove. But at $28, you know, it, it is up against, again, the, the Spirit, about the same price. The AK-400, depending on which version you get, is not too far in price and is a far nicer looking cooler. Performance-wise, we'll look at that in the review today. And then you go up a little higher still to, say, 30-something dollars, maybe, uh, maybe 40 or so and you get something like the uh, Peerless Assassin rather than the uh, Assassin Spirit. And then Mike will expand it a little bit on how it actually installs and what his thoughts and criticisms are on this. But before we get over to Mike, we're gonna talk about the pressure map and the flatness for this cooler. Pressure scanning is first. This tests the mounting hardware and pressure applied by the mounting kit, which helps us to understand points of contact by the cooler to the CPU. We use carefully calibrated scanning tools for this that were made affordable thanks to all of you who support us on Patreon over at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for all of your help, and we just posted a new behind-the-scenes video exclusive for Patreon backers over there. Since the CPU is powered off for a pressure test, it actually doesn't matter what CPU we use to mount it to. It's just a test vehicle. So, for this one, the 3950X scan presented extremely poor contact. We're relying on thermal paste entirely to bridge the gaps here, which means that this cooler will perform significantly worse if you have bad paste spread. We apply our paste manually and spread it over the CPU, so it's no problem for our tests. It's just something you need to be careful about. There's one good point of heat pipe contact at the bottom of this scan, partial contact on the top pipe, basically none without paste at least on the second pipe, and some on the third. Adding the 3800X scans, it's basically the same just with another CPU. So it's not a matter of an individual CPU, but the cooler itself is just making poor contact everywhere. This is actually the worst scan of a CPU cooler that we've seen yet. The flatness is up next. For this test, we measure from a known zero point to test for depth in microns. The most important part is that the flatness is consistent from point to point, not necessarily the absolute depth. And this is the chart. The wider the box, the more range there is point to point. That's the median, and these are done in quartiles. The highest point isn't necessarily damning as long as the box itself is narrow. In this instance, the Amazon Basics cooler is one of the worst we've tested yet again. The flatness has similar peaks to the Assassin's Spirit, which breaks the bounds here, and to the Freezer 34. However, both of those had excellent median results. So the boxes, being thin with those, indicate overall a flat contact patch. The A500 by Corsair was the previous worst for median point-to-point -point flatness, and that was due to a design error where the heat pipes weren't smoothed equally. In the instance of the Amazon cooler, the deepest pits are mostly in between the direct heat pipes and the aluminum plate that surrounds them. That's fine if it's all filled with paste, and in our testing, it is. But higher-end coolers typically have tighter tolerances here and smaller gaps, and that's just the obvious trade-off for going cheap. You lose quality somewhere. This was clearly it for Amazon and or Cooler Master. Now that we know about how the mechanics affect the cooler, we're going to go over to the installation and criticism of the mounting mechanism from Mike. Welcome back to another installation segment. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, out of the box, you're, it's going to come to you like this with no brackets installed. So we're going to go ahead and take the fan off, which is actually it's very easy to install and uninstall. I actually really liked that. Um, and we're going to get these brackets installed. So both the Intel and AMD ha have uh, two brackets that install from the bottom here via one screw that holds them into place. Go ahead and walk this backwards. So you might be noticing, I don't know if, it can, if it's uh, 
apparent or obvious in the footage that's being collected right now, but this screw is off at a little angle and we will be talking about that a little bit later. Okay, so the brackets are installed. We're ready to move on to putting it onto the motherboard, um, which I so conveniently have ready to go right here. So you're gonna remove your AMD stock brackets, which I didn't have screwed in. It's almost like I planned this. Um, and then we are going to, oh, we gotta apply our thermal paste. Can't forget that. All right, and now we're gonna put our cooler into place on the CPU. So this cooler is directional in quotation marks. Um, the front side of the cooler or the front face is larger than the back, the back tapers. So the fan can only be mounted on this larger face. So we're gonna face that towards the RAM. I'm gonna place that down. I'm gonna hold this AMD bracket up so that I can rest the cooler on it. And I've got those lined up now, so I'm going to go ahead and start all four corners of this cooler in their respective threads. Okay, and that's all started. And now I'm going to go di alternating diagonally across the cooler. I'm just going to start tightening down all four corners here. All right. And this cooler, you can tighten down until these go snug, and it, it's totally safe. I, I actually kind of like that. It takes out any kind of guesswork on the installation. Next, you would go ahead and install your fan, which I will do because it's so quick and easy with this fan. I actually really liked this, um, this fan's plastic clips. I'm normally not a fan of plastic um, for parts that you have to pry on, but this seems pretty substantial and uh, does a pretty good job. It's easy to take on, and, uh, easy to put on and easy to take off. The Intel brackets install identically to the AMD brackets. They, they thread in via one screw each uh, from the bottom of the cooler. And of course they included an Intel backplate. Uh, this one's plastic, but it does have the adjustable holes for um, Intel 1700 and 1200 socket types. So you got everything you need there. It is, it is plastic. I'm not a huge fan of that, but you know, we're looking at a budget cooler. Okay, let's talk about criticisms. Um, I had two things I didn't really like about this cooler's installation hardware. Um, and one was more of a manufacturing flaw. The female threads on the AMD brackets that are currently in use right now, um, they were tapped at an angle. Um, I was very careful when I was initially installing this, and I, I noticed it when I was trying to get the screw to thread that it, every time the threads wanted to catch, I was noticing that the, the screw would tilt off to an angle. I normally back a screw out. Uh, we've talked about this a lot, but I back a screw out uh, you know, in, in reverse or counterclockwise in order to make sure that I'm catching the threads properly before I go clockwise in a, or in a tightening direction. Um, and these were very clearly at an angle. We'll get some close-ups of that. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and take this cooler off now to show you the other item that I wasn't too fond of. Okay. As you can see, this is the screw I was talking about. The top of it is kind of canted off to the side as compared to the screw on the other side, which is obviously flush and fits nicely together. But uh, that brings me to my other criticism, which is the driver that I'm having to use for this. These screws were Phillips head ones. Phillips head two, which is your kind of your standard your very common screwdriver Phillips head, um, it won't work here. They don't fit. So, um, you know, for something a little bit more expensive, maybe that's a little bit more acceptable, but, you know, this is a budget cooler and maybe this is somebody's first time assembling a computer at all. So it's, it's a minor criticism, but it's something to be aware of. Um, and that wraps up the installation segment for the Amazon Basics cooler. Um, and I'm going to throw it back to Steve now. Okay, now we're back to me to do the thermal analysis. So for our thermal testing, we have a whole methodology video on it. We'd encourage you to watch it. But the quick basics that matter the most, we do all of our testing in a heavily controlled ambient environment. So the ambient temperature is kept flat for the entire test. We take a delta T over ambient reading. And uh, then for variables that we control, it's basically all of them. But there are a lot people don't think about. So for example, the motherboard, you really need to be controlling uh, not just vCore, but vSOC, vDIMM, vDDG, vDDIO, every possible vSOC, every possible voltage you can find for the board needs to be controlled because if any of them are auto-controlled and adjust even a little bit during testing, you've invalidated your comparison between other coolers. So we control all of that. We also have a, a current sensing 
set up so that we can monitor the current for every second, actually goes down to milliseconds, but of the test to make sure the power consumption is the same when we test this one versus this one. So we know that there are no changes in the test setup uh, because power is ultimately what you're testing. How well does it cool a known power load through the CPU? So that's some of the controls we have, whole separate video on it, but let's take a look at some of the numbers. We'll start with the 68 watt heat load when noise normalized. This would be comparable for low end CPUs like R5s, i3s, non-K SKU i5s and stuff like that. The Amazon Basics cooler held the CPU at 41 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient in this test, marking it as comparable to the Vetru V5. Despite the V5's initial budget-oriented success, it's been largely outmoded by other coolers. That's the risk with competing on price. Someone, especially Amazon, can always be cheaper. The Amazon cooler is significantly better than the 35 dBA noise normalized AMD stock cooler results, including the Wraith Prism and the Wraith Spire. The 11 degree reduction against the Spire makes it actually a meaningful upgrade. And compared to higher end options, the Thermal Wright Assassin Spirit, which was about the same price actually, runs three degrees cooler. That's significant when the heat load is this low, as there's really not much room for better coolers to stretch their legs. The 100% fan speed test is uncapped, so louder coolers can propel themselves to the top of the chart. However, the Amazon cooler already operates close to the 35 dBA normalization we perform, and so it has little change. The Amazon cooler held the CPU at 40.5 degrees Celsius over ambient, only a 0.5 degree change on average from the previous results. That has it in the same hierarchical positioning, so the Vetra V5 now holds a 1 degree lead, but it's noticeably louder at 43 dBA. The Hyper 212 versus Amazon Basics, or effectively Cooler Master competing against Cooler Master here, runs 1.3 degrees better. The Assassin Spirit maintains a leading position at a similar noise level, while the Scythe Puma 2 keeps its impressively efficient ranking with the best noise to thermal results on this particular chart. The only thing that beats this is going to be liquid coolers, which are tested on higher end CPUs. But for comparable prices, the Spirit would be the closest, and then probably the $15 Coolwist cooler and then the $20 to $30 212 variants, although those are also pretty outdated. Time to move to a denser chart and higher heat load. This one tests 123 watt CPUs. So R7s and some i5 SKUs and non-K i7 CPUs land here, depending on generation. This will also push the cheaper coolers to their limits. The Amazon Basics cooler is the worst one on the chart. It's at 63 degrees Celsius over ambient, but it's within error of the Vetru V5. The best single fan air cooler here is the Noctua NHU14S with its 140 mil fan, and then the Assassin Spirit, which is closer in price. The Spirit is nearly five degrees cooler than the Amazon Basic solution, which is a big jump considering the equivalent price. The Spirit has more recently been renamed. We'll talk about that later though. The 63 over ambient is in the 80s for average temperature, meaning without the delta T over ambient. And given core to core deltas can push some of those numbers into the 90s for individual cores, we're at the limit of what's possible for 123 watt load with this cooler. You should not buy the Amazon Basics cooler or the V5 for that matter for a hotter CPU, particularly if you have a hotter ambient or you're using a closed off case. Finally, at full speed and 123 watts, it's still at the bottom of the chart. Some parts shuffle when running quieter since they can't brute force the workload, but Amazon remains in the same spot. The Vetru is a couple degrees cooler thanks to its noticeably louder fan. So uh, the Amazon Basics cooler honestly is better than it has any business being, and that's because it's a Cooler Master cooler. Uh, if Amazon actually made it, probably wouldn't be as okay. It's not impressive. So once again, I, the Thermal Right Spirit, uh, if you get it at a similar price, it's just a better option. Um, certainly for efficiency, you end up better with something higher end like a Fuma 2, but that is a much more expensive one. But there are plenty of coolers in the $30 range. Even the Hyper T12, we wouldn't recommend it today. There's better options, AK400 included. But even that is, uh, depending on which version you get, it's going to outperform the Amazon one for a similar price. The stock coolers, from AMD these days, uh, I mean, the Stealth, for example, really kind of struggles to keep up. And in terms of noise efficiency, they are, they're very inefficient for the cooling capability you get at the noise level that they run. And I, that's just the nature of a smaller condensed cooler, but it's kind of quote unquote free because it comes in the box. But 
the conclusion here really is just that the Amazon Basics one, it's an upgrade from a stock cooler from what we've tested and probably in most cases that is more noise efficient than a stock cooler, uh, but it's not better than a comparable aftermarket option for around $30. And maybe when you check online, the Amazon Basics one is cheaper than we're saying here. Uh, the prices seem to change on them. So if it drops 20 bucks, a little more worth considering, but even still, because it's a rebrand of Cooler Master, you know there's going to be a Cooler Master option for around the same price, and potentially you get a little bit more flair with it, depending on how much Amazon is cutting. Uh, cool West would be another one to consider if you can wait for it to come in. You'd be buying that through AliExpress or something, though. But we have a review where it's a $15 air cooler. It does really well if you can stand or want the dragon that is emblazoned on the top of the cooler. We still wouldn't recommend the Amazon Basics one overall, though, nor would we recommend the Cooler Master H4 10R or whatever it is that's the base model because it's going to have the same problem, uh, specifically because of the mounting pressure. It's the worst mounting pressure map we've ever seen. It's really impressive in that way, but not for a good reason. And you only really get contact in that pressure map we showed earlier, of maybe the top pipe, bottom pipe, some of the third, none of the second, and it's just not good pressure distribution. The flatness is also all over the place, and that's because of those valleys where the heat pipe connects with the aluminum of the base plate, but most companies that do a little bit higher end, they have tighter tolerances, more machining, and they'll fill those gaps a little bit better and run the heat pipe closer to the aluminum plate than what's happening on the Amazon one, i.e. the Cooler Master one. So we still wouldn't recommend it, but if you buy one, it's not like it's a joke or it's true garbage. Uh, it's okay. And if you install it, just make sure you apply the paste carefully. We manually spread paste for our testing. You should probably do the same, but all that really matters is that you have enough. Going too little paste here will actually impact the performance. You're not going to go too much. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching as always. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net. Let's grab a shirt like this one or one of our mod mats, and you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly if you like this kind of testing and our objective analysis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.